Hello again guys, it's Carly from The Poetry of Nice and I have a weekly sales video for you guys. So this week was a little bit, um, I guess, shorter because we have Memorial Day at the beginning of the week. So this will just be a selection um, of some of the sales I had between like Tuesday and Sunday on Poshmark and eBay. Um, usually I do Etsy as well and Truth be told, I haven't had a single sale on Etsy this week. It's just died a death for me. And I have not been paying attention to it either. So, you know, that's fair enough. Um, but I guess I will be nurturing it a little bit more <laughs> in the next week and hopefully reawakening it. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and start out with Posh and just show you a few of the things I sold um, this week. I'm actually coming up now to, uh, this is like my kind of month point um so i figured that i would share with you guys some of the stuff that's gone on actually let me just go ahead and pull this up and show you some of my stats because i feel like that would be interesting um, with us being a month in so let's have a look here so i'm going to pull up my sales and then i'm going to pull up uh, my balance first just so i can well no let me do my posh stats actually and i can show you exactly what all um, I've had so I have 176 available listings right now. I made it to Posh Ambassador. Yay, that's cool. <laughs> um, yes, listings sold. I sold 59 items. Um, doo -doo -doo. And I guess it doesn't say how much I have made so far. Um, that's okay. Oh, there we go. I'm just kidding. So total earned is just over a thousand dollars. So that's just in the first month. Um, I feel like that's pretty good for getting to know a new platform. Um, and you know, this completely different to eBay and Etsy as well. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with that for the first month, and I'm hoping to just grow it from from here on out, really. So just stay tuned, and I'm going to share that with you. And of course, I'll be doing um, a Poshmark only video soon, just letting you guys know exactly what I think of the platform. Obviously, it's pretty positive so far, but there are a few things I'll definitely mention, and definitely some tips and stuff that I've come across, um, things I've learned in this first month that maybe sharing with you guys would, would help you as well if you're thinking of getting started on that platform. Oh, right. So here we go. Let's get started. So Poshmark first. So obviously Lucky Brand, um, like a baseball tee. It had this bear logo on it that had like California um, cities and stuff on it. Um, I don't think I showed this in my last video. If I did, I'd completely apologize. Memorial Day has thrown me off massively. But anyway, I paid about 50 cents at a rummage sale for this. And it sold for $15. After Poshmark fees and cost of goods, the profit was $11.50. And um, this White House Black Market blouse sold. I had this up on eBay for at least six months, if not more, with absolutely no attention whatsoever. So I redid my photos. I had it flat laid. I redid them like this. And then I made my cover photo on both eBay and Etsy. This one here, because it has this beautiful, like, laser cut detail. And you just can't see it very well on here. Um, so I went ahead and made a close up my thumbnail. And this sold within two weeks of listing it, like cross posting it from eBay over to this platform. And um, I paid about $2 for this at a thrift store originally, because it was, I think, half price. Um, but I pay twenty dollars on Poshmark. They always pay shipping, um, and my uh, profit after all was said and done was fourteen dollars. Another one that I brought over from eBay that had been sitting. Um, I paid three dollars for these Tiba sandals um, at a rummage sale. They were quite small. They were a size six. Um, Tiba. Let me see if I can get a close up. Here we go. Um, so they will always have this here as style number, so you can look them up. That's what told me they were the original universal sandals. That is super useful when listing things like this. Um, and you'll find that on that inner band there. So I paid $3, but I paid $25. After fees and cost of goods, I made a profit of $17. And um, this was another 50 cent buy on a kind of a rummage sale situation that I went to. Um, it was just an Antail off like guess like a drop waist is what I called it, providing measurements and stuff. It's got this like flouncy area at the bottom. It was kind of textured as well. Um, so paid 50 cents, buy I paid 28. My profit was 21.90 after the 20% fees. Um, this was kind of interesting. So I found this at a rummage sale and I had no idea what it was. It was handmade. Um, you could kind of tell by the stitching, which I did do close-ups on. Um, and 
it had no labels or anything like that, but it did have this amazing like library book print all over. And for want of a better word, I called it a kimono. <laughs> Be, just because like what on earth do you call this thing like a shrug or something anyway um i paid 50 cents for this um where am i yes 50 cents for this at a rummage sale and my profit was around 21 dollars when all was said and done i believe Um, these American Eagle jeggings, they sold really quickly as well. Um, they were only posted for maybe two days. Uh, I took a best offer of $20. I paid two at a yard sale, so my profit was 14 American Eagle can sell really well if it's the right size. High rise is always good. Skinny is always good. Uh, jeggings is always good. Super distressed and destroyed is usually very good also. Those are the things at the very least that I will use to determine whether or not I will buy um, a pair of American Eagle jeans, even if they're super cheap. I always try and get them for like one, two, three dollars, no more than that, um, and only if they're in those particular sizes. All right, these kids were awesome, and they were mine. <laughs> um, they just did not fit me well enough. They hurt my feet. My feet were too big. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I put my cost of goods as zero just because they belong to me, um, and I can't honestly remember exactly what I paid for them originally, and they were just out of my own closet. So I took a best offer of $25, which meant that my profit after the fees was $20. And um, this Ted Baker London blouse was beautiful i had plenty of interest on it but my goodness i could not sell it for the life of me on ebay or etsy so we well, haven't said that uh, sorry ebay or poshmark um you know i've only been going for a month and this has only been up for a month so it took a, about four weeks to sell on poshmark even with the interest um but this brand i've heard some really really good things about let me see if i can get the label for you so you can see what that looks like um it just didn't move very fast for me but having said that it did sell for 35 dollars. i paid for it at a thrift store so my um my profit was 24 dollars, which is not bad at all this is just a michael kors pencil skirt it's like a jersey knit almost with exposed zippers on the front and the back paid 50 cents for it took a best offer of 16 um and my profit was twelve dollars and thirty cents this thing finally sold so this madewell shirt um i picked it up for about ooh, about four dollars at a thrift store um i did cross post this on poshmark and on ebay it's been up for three to four weeks at this point it had like 32 likes on poshmark i'd been sending out offers constantly <laughs> nobody would even respond with a count off it had 20 watches on ebay again not a single offer um and i was honestly right on the edge of just pulling down the listing and relisting it they're starting afresh with new likers and whatever and just seeing if i could move it and um, anyway hurrah it finally sold so i paid four dollars at the thrift store it sold for 24 which gave me a profit of 15 dollars and 20 cents and i am so glad it is going to a new home <laughs> Um, these tatami, oh gosh, I don't know. Anyway, they're an offshoot of Birkenstock. Um, often you'll see something and you'll be like, oh, those look like Birks. And then you'll look at them and no, they're not. But anyway, look closely, made by Birkenstock. They have several offshoots. There's this one, there's the papilios, I think is what you call them. There's several different ones and they all do sell, at least in my experience. Um, so I paid about 25 cents for these at a filler bag sale, which is not bad at all. Um, they sold for $28 and my profit was $22.15. These were a miracle. <laughs> I, um, I picked these up at a filler bag sale as well. So I probably paid around 50 cents for them, if that. I grabbed them because I thought they were cute. Um, overall, short alls, whatever you want to call them, tend to do well anyway. And then they had this really adorable daisy print all over them. The brand was... Cherokee, which we all know is absolutely nothing. And this large here is a junior's large. So I had several things working against me and pretty much the only thing that was in my favor was the fact that they were kind of cute and kind of on trend, depending what you're into. Um, they sold in less than a week and granted they only sold for $12, but like I said, I paid 50 cents. My profit was $9 and 10 cents. Um, heck yeah, easy enough, right? And it was a quick sale. Um, these were super quick. These sold in less than a day. And um, these were actually in, I think, my last haul video from the Asheville Goodwill um, outlet 
area. They, I got this from the retail store and I paid $4.29 for these. I grabbed them because they were Keens and I just have, in my experience, I've had really good luck with Keens. Um, once again, just like the Tevas that I showed you, there is a little what's it down here um, that has the style number in it. And that is how I was able to find out that they were the Sierra Mary Jane flats. They also do not sell them right now. They're completely sold out. And size 10 is a really good size. And um, these were cross posted on eBay and Poshmark, like I said, in less than a day. And uh, they did have a couple of marks and things like that. So they weren't perfect at all, um, but they were in good shape, very wearable um, and they're good durable shoes as well. So $4.29 is what I paid. They sold for 40 in about a day and my profit was 27.71. So not bad at all. And my last Poshmark uh, sale to show you is these Lucky brand, the Sweet Jean Bootcut Dark Jeans. <laughs> um, yeah, what can I say? They're Lucky brand and they're bootcut jeans. I mean, they're, they're pretty standard as far as it goes. Um, I paid $2 for these at a yard sale. They sold for 19 They sat for quite a, a while. Lucky brand, in my experience, usually does. Um, at least women's, actually men's too, if I'm being really honest. But it does eventually sell. So it sold for 19 and my profit was $13.20. All right, let's move over to eBay. Fair warning, I am not going to do the breakdown for eBay like I did with Poshmark. Poshmark is so simple to tell you guys because of the 20%. eBay has the PayPal fees and the eBay seller fees. Um, so I'm just not going to do that right now. So that being said, I'm going to let you know that the buyer paid shipping on all of these items and that to bear in mind that there's roughly 15% off of the selling price I tell you um, would be taken in fees. Just please bear that in mind, just wanting to be transparent. All right, let's get started. So this is a brand that was new to me, Sandro. I picked this up for 50 cents at a rummage sale. Here is the tag. Um, honestly, the reason why I grabbed it, there's several reasons. One was the label. So it's tacked on here. The, it just looked higher end and the sizing is different. What can I say? Like, it just stood out to me. Down here, uh, Sandro Paris, Paris France, that just stood out as well about uh, being, like, you know, slightly more interesting. And then it's a wool cashmere blend. So it had several things going for it. Actually, it turns out to be like a $300 to $400 sweater. So that's good. Um, this was listed on both platforms, had multiple offers on both platforms as well, and sold within about three days of being, three to four days of being listed. Um, and it sold for a best offer. I just went ahead and took it for $30 because I paid 50 cents for it and it did have a flaw. I made a little repair right here. Um, you can barely tell at all, but I had to put a couple of stitches in and that does devalue things. So anyway, $30, not bad for 50 cents investment. All right. I thought this would have gone a long time ago, but anyway, it had been listed on eBay for a while. I redid my photos, cross-posted it on Poshmark, did have some interest, but eventually I took a best offer of $20 on eBay for it. It's White House Black Market, um, just a really cute plaid popover, but it's definitely not the season for this. So I'm, you know, I'm grateful it sold anyway. Um, and I paid $4 at a thrift store for this. So $4 into 20, that's okay. And Joe's D jeans, I actually got these home and realized, let me show you the picture at the end, there was all kinds of scuffs on the bottom, which does sort of break down the value. And they were the honey fit, which is basically just like a boot cut. So they weren't anything exciting whatsoever, but I found them for a dollar at a yard sale. So I went ahead and grabbed them and I took a best offer of $16. Like I said, the buyer pays shipping on all of these items. Um, so that's not too bad at all. These were a fail and I wanted to show you guys. So I picked these up at a thrift store. I paid about $2 for these because they were half price. They were Lauren Ralph Lauren. They are, um, you know, leather and all that. And they had this like bit bridal uh, situation happening, equestrian vibe, whatever you want to call it. But they were so beat up and it wasn't until I got home that I realized like there's scuffs to the back. The soles were definitely an absolute mess. I could not get that writing off for the life of me, so I had to disclose it in the photos and in the listing because I never want someone to get them and be like, oh, hey, $3.99. <laughs> you see all these scuffs? They were just a mess. This was a fail on my part. Um, so I sold them for $9.99. <laughs> so $2 into $10. I mean, that's fine, but it's not really worth the time to list, in my opinion. But I wanted to show you guys that this is probably something I would not pick up again unless it was really amazing um okay these michael kors 
shoes are like boomerangs. So they've sold twice before and the people haven't paid, both times on eBay. Plenty of interest in Poshmark as well. They were really cool, this like cut out wedge detail, good shape, patent leather, um, leather soles, which is usually a really good sign of, um, you know, quality, I suppose, good size. 10 um, but they still sat around for a while even with like 15 watches on ebay um so oh gosh i've lost my notes where am i oh i took a best offer of 24.25 for these i, mean, I only paid two dollars at a yard sale so i was happy enough with that and finally they paid and they're going on their way <laughs> um these madewell jeans i thought that they would sell on poshmark first they did not they sold here for the full asking price of 24.99 and um, madewell jeans as far as i can tell on comps seem to go um for more on poshmark than they do on e uh, on ebay hang on one second I'm so sorry, I had to sneeze. Okay, they <laughs> tend to go more for posh, on Poshmark than they do on eBay. Um, but having said that, I'm happy with $25. I actually paid $4.99 for these at the thrift store, and I would have quite happily taken $25 as an offer on Poshmark, and that's still in line with comps. It's definitely not super below market value. Um, so I went ahead and took it, and buy paid shipping. Oh, this little guy. Don't tell my son. <laughs> um, this was my oldest son's. Um, he is a Build-A-Bear Paw Patrol rubble. Um, so let me tell you, if you see these guys, Build-A-Bear, I wouldn't waste your time on like just the regular bears or even the pattern bears necessarily, though you may want to double check, but the characters. If you see them at yard sales for cheap, grab them. If this guy had had, if he was working and speaking, he was not. He, if he had like his original voice, this guy, my son chose to put in, let it go from Frozen. <laughs> so he had that working against him as well. Um, but it didn't work anyway. The speaker, the batteries have run out. And as we all know, they're like sewn up in there, which is such a pain. Um, he also had like his little thing on his collar was missing, his Paw Patrol, whatever. Um, he did not have his outfit. If he had had his outfit and had been working, he would have gone for well over $100. Um, having said that, as he was, with a few scuffs here and there, not speaking, does not have his costume, missing his thing on his collar, he still sold for $35 plus shipping. Build-A-Bear character things, they are retired quickly, um, and people want replacements and whatever, and um, just keep your eyes peeled. Bolo and all that. Okay, 35 bucks for rubble. Um, okay, this I got in a filler bag sale. 50 cents is roughly what I paid for this. It's H&M. Most people say to stay away from H&M. I think it depends on not just style, but I think print goes a long way as well. This like tropical palm leaf print. It was just a sheath dress, like a very fitted dress with an exposed zipper. It sold for full asking price in about two weeks for $16.99 plus shipping, which I do not think is too bad for H&M or for a 50 cent investment. Okay, this is another like bolo, if you will. Um, Aviator Nation, if you haven't heard of this brand, let me go ahead and show you the label. This is what it looks like. I picked this up for 50 cents in the um, like rummage sale thing I was at. I'm sure you can tell I grabbed it because of the label. The shirt itself does not look particularly like provocative. I wouldn't look at it. Apart from the stitching, the stitching detail was very interesting, but I wouldn't look at it and say, oh, that's you know something really special. But I saw this, um, with all of its verbiage and whatever and how it's made in the USA, just a lot of effort into that tag and I knew that it was going to be something pretty interesting. So 50 cents, I grabbed it, got home and lo looked it up. And to be fair, these t-shirts only seem to sell for around $80 online for Aviator Nation. However, I don't know if they maybe retire their designs quickly or something. Um, I took a best offer for this guy for, um, where is it, $35. And I took that offer within two hours of listing it. Um, and I was happy with $35 from 50 cents, but it would not have been totally wild for me to have get the $50, even though they only retail for around 80. I'm not sure what the deal is there, but hey, if you see this brand, you know, go for it, try it out. Uh, okay, um, I showed you this in my last haul video as well. Um, and I told you then that it had sold Icebreaker. Um, again, this sold within like an hour or two of listing it. Sold, it had some interest on Poshmark, but it sold on eBay first. And I paid $3.99 for this at a thrift store. It is just a simple gray tank, although it is 100% New Zealand merino wool. Um, Icebreaker is a really good brand. And as you, uh, as you can tell, it moves fast. So here's the logo and 
the label for you. And I took a best offer of 20 and was super happy with that. Um, this I paid 4 dollars for at a thrift store about three weeks ago. Um, and it sold, yeah, about a week and a half to two weeks is when it sold. It took me a little bit of time to get it listed. Uh, I would say, yeah, I would say probably a week is how long it was up for. And again, lots of interest on Poshmark. Went on eBay first. Um, I feel like I'm getting quite a good balance with the brands that cross post well on both platforms. I do feel like I'm getting almost even action on both platforms, as it were. So anyway, for what that's worth, um, four forty nine is what I paid for it. Took a best offer of twenty five dollars. And then here's the front. You can tell as well the front is kind of like meh. There's not much to show for it, which is why I went ahead and put a photo of the beautiful back, um, as the cover photo. It's always okay to do that. All right, this was a fail as well. Chico's, bane of my life. <laughs> bane of my thrifting life. I really do not pick up Chico's much anymore. I thought this was bound to do well. It's 100% like suede leather. It had all this like embroidered mirror detail all over it. It's not my style, but I figured it was unusual enough someone would like it. I only paid 30 cents at a filler bag um, and it still took like eight months to sell and it's all for $15. Like, Chico's is just not my thing, apparently. I know it does well for some people, it's just apparently not me. Okay, Zara, another brand that I find was super hit on this. They're skinny jeans. These have, oh gosh, I've had these for since March, since way at the beginning of March, so a long while now. I paid $3 for them and they finally sold for $14.99 plus shipping. I probably not would, would not pick those up again unless they were like 25 or 50 cents. Um, Ralph Lauren, hey, look at these horrendous pictures. <laughs> Can you tell that I have changed the way that I do my pictures? Anyway, um, so I paid 25 cents each for these Ralph Lauren, really loud, sorry, Lauren Ralph Lauren, which is like the lower end Ralph Lauren. Um, very loud shirts, blouses, whatever you want to call them. I took best offer of $15 for this, and this sold for full asking price of $19.99. This I picked up for 10 cents at a rummage sale, but it has just sat and sat and sat. It is a canvas, um, so people would sew like embroidered design over the top of that. Um, it did have some marks and stuff and, you know, plenty of bending and whatnot. Um, that's okay. Paid 10 cents, sold for $10, probably wouldn't do it again just because it's a bit of a pain to ship and whatnot. Um, and the final thing I'm going to show you is just good old reliable Grey's Anatomy. I pick these up whenever I see them for like two bucks or less. This one sold for $14.99 plus shipping. Pretty good. I tend to stay away from just the solid colours now, although they do still sell for me, just not as well. Um, and I try to make sure I only pick up the fitted ones, like the more boxy ones just don't really... Uh, sell as well for me. Okay, so that is everything that I had to show you guys um, this week from sales. I hope that was interesting. Um, how did your guys' Memorial Day sales go? I actually had a pretty good weekend last weekend, as I showed you in my, um, in my sales video, and I feel like it just kind of kept going. It was pretty active all week, and this weekend especially, there was plenty going on, so I was pretty excited about that. Um, let me know how they went. Put it down in the comments so I can see how everybody else is doing. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And subscribe if you want to see more. I'll be back with either a haul video, sales video, or that Poshmark video and all the other things you guys have been requesting. I have a big old list. I'm making videos as and when I go and slowly piecing them together. So just bear with me. There will be some more stuff coming out soon. All right, guys. I'll talk to you soon and have a wonderful week. Bye.